Oh, good morning and welcome to the first uh, Sustainable CT Coffee Hour of 2021. My name is Lynn Stoddard. I'm the Executive Director of Sustainable CT. Excited to get these rolling. As you probably know, we did a bunch of coffee hours during uh, the first few months of COVID and um, we wanted to bring them back because it's a great way to connect with you all. So we'll be holding these coffee hours each month uh, this year on the third Fridays at 10 o'clock. And our intentions are um, to create a space for all of us to informally share our sustainability work, successes, questions, challenges, um, an informal space to help support each other in our work, a space to build community across town boundaries and inspire collaboration, and also an opportunity for you all to get to know our staff at Sustainable CT. So you know who to reach out to, who can support you, and uh, just the face, the face behind uh, the email. Um, so with that, I'm just going to start us off by um, introductions of our team. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Torin, and he'll introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does. This is the part where I talk now. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Torin Radicioni. I am Sustainable CT's webmaster. Um, I do see some familiar names here with some emails that I've been sent, you know, within the couple days. So I'm glad everyone's here. Um, anybody has any problems with the website, I'm going to pop my email in. Feel free to just personally reach out to me if you guys need any help with it. That's kind of what I do with Sustainable CT. So pleasure to meet everybody. Awesome. And Torin, are we, uh, can we record this? All I right. think we're already recording. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, now I see it. Great. So just let everyone know we are recording this for those who miss it, they can jump in and listen up later. Um, yeah, so a little bit about the format of these um, coffee hours. Uh, we figured we'd start by highlighting a brief sharing uh, from, it could be um, a town sharing what they're doing, in some cases, uh, over the months, we might share um, uh, opportunities to get input from you on our program and our support tools or share new things that are happening. Um, but then also plenty of time for just informal discussion, questions, um, opportunities to share what you're doing. When we have bigger crowds, we can go into breakout rooms, whatever is useful. Um, so if you have a sustainability action or a part of your program that um, you're forging new ground and saying, wow, this is great, love to have other towns learn from us, or you're struggling and say, wow, we need some help, um, reach out and we're happy to um, kind of focus on, on those topics that are most useful. These coffee hours are for you and um, we really wanna know what, what works for you. So in, you know, informal and casual and hoping to connect. So before I'll do my one piece of sharing from our program news um, this morning before I introduce the speakers, and that is that, drum roll, Sustainable CT is hiring. This does not happen often. Happens once every couple of years. As you know, we're all grant funded and um, we've been doing some strategic planning last year with our board and are in a good position to bring on uh, a couple of folks for much needed help. So this is gonna be posted on our website. I hope I'll get it uh, ready for today. Uh, if not early next week. So keep an eye out. We'll also put it in the e-newsletter. The positions are a communications manager, um, a program assistant, and uh, 2021 fellows. So you know about our fellows program. We have college interns supporting you towns all summer. Um, the call for 2021 fellows is already up on our website. So if you know of uh, college students, um, who are looking for work and uh, would be great to support towns, um, please share that and share, share any of them. So that's, uh, that's all I've got to say. I am super excited that we have the team from New Milford with us today. Stephen Guess, Julie Bailey, and Karen Pollard. They're going to take, take it from here and introduce themselves, but like a quick like spoiler. They're going to talk about their sustainability team and kind of some of the some of the um, things they've been doing to kind of build that. And Julie just told me they have more than thirty people on their sustainability committee. So uh, that's pretty amazing. So we're excited to hear from them and learn from them. And I'm going to turn it over to Stephen. Unmuted. 
Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Julie and I are really excited to be here. Um, and our goal this morning is to take you through um, you know, the trials and tribulations of what we did to both get ourselves sort of uh, focused, um, future oriented and get this project launched. Um, I will, and what we're, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with taking you through very quickly a deck that I put together to introduce the concept to folks around town. Um, that being, you know, my motivation for building this deck was when Julie first introduced me to the project, I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. Uh, then I went to the website and now I didn't have two clues what she didn't talk about, what <laughs> she was talking about. I mean, there was just so much information and, you know, sustainability, environmental stuff, not in my wheelhouse then. Um, and so through this process of trying to get the project down to the essence and sort of package it in, in a way that made it easier for me to talk about it, we created this deck. Um, I'm gonna take you through that. And then Julie is going to uh, take you through the, the sort of the global steps that we took to organize ourselves, organize the team and get from spreadsheet to reality. Uh, so with that, I'm going to move to my PowerPoint. Um, this deck was designed um, for various folks around town, uh, for town council, uh, zoning commissions, historical groups, rotary, uh, environmental groups, as a way to sort of help them to understand what it is that we're doing and more importantly, to ask for their help in getting it done. Um, so let me uh, go to a full screen view. Oops, I didn't share my screen yet. Okay, can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm gonna go into full screen here uh, and start. All right, um, and what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the pattern that I use with the, the, that we've been using and try to help you understand why certain choices were made from a communications point of view. Starting with this very first slide, um, I was charmed with this old map um, and then did a little research on it and found that this map was drawn the same year that the town installed its very first water fountain for townspeople, dogs, and horses. And I used that as a jumping off point to sort of, it, sort of um, exaggerate the fact that over a hundred years ago, this town was sitting around the table saying, what can we do to make this town better? And that's, th that's our jump off. Sustainability is all about the future. It's about making it better. And that's what we're here to talk about. So from there, it's like, so what is this? Um, at that point, I go through that it is mission driven, rigorous, and my, my mantra about what is sustainability you know, it's sort of this three part thing where it's su sustainable Connecticut believes that the health and well being of a town um, and a town's economy uh, is critical for the health and well being of a town's environment, which is critical for the health and well being of the folks who live here. And then, because I'm an old educator, I say sustainability is spelled with three E's. Econo the economy of the town, the environment of the town, and the equity. And those three pieces have to work together. Um, the fact that the program is volunteer voluntary, that it's grassroots, that it is for towns by towns. Talk a little bit about where you guys are coming from. And then I sort of expand this a little and say, this is being supported by environmentalists, conservationists, scientists, educators, 
who have our back and are helping us to see our way forward through this through the process and through the bigger idea of being a sustainable town. Um, and then because I was an innocent about sustainability, thinking that it was just about the forest and the trees and the water and the air. Um, this is the time where I say, you know, here's what's really exciting and interesting about this process is, yes, it is about the environment, but it's about how we impact that. It's about our zoning decisions. It's about our planning decisions. It's about housing, public services, homelessness, food networks. Uh, and, and it even recognizes that sustainability has a human heartbeat as expressed through arts and culture. So it is a thoroughly integrated approach to how we make our town better, more interesting, more engaging, more sustainable. Quick background, this is probably the shortest slide uh, in the deck. Um, when you guys were established, that there are levels of certification, bronze and silver, that's, that those are based on points and what, what has been termed actions. And uh, we do sort of give people an idea because it's still very vague. What are you talking about? Um, some of the stats have this program, even though it's just a couple of years old, has engaged over half of the municipalities uh, in the state. Um, we, in fact, as a town, were bronze certified a couple of years ago, and now we're going for silver. So those of you who have started the process, you know, you can give the history, and there you go. Um, from a graphic point of view, too, um, because none of this existed, and maybe Sustainable Connecticut wants to think about creating a template, I created something with the goal of looking contemporary, looking sort of environmental, ergo all the blue and green, um, as a way to say, this is, this is now, this is modern, this is important. Um, this is not just an old idea left over from the 60s. This is, this is really about what's coming. This is, this is one of my favorite slides because um, as Julie will tell you, what was really important for us is to get people off the idea of a credential and a prize and a medal and get them more thinking about the process and the bigger goal of making this a sustainable town, which is why I broke this, you know, th this uh, slide about what's in it for us because everyone we talk to, so why are we doing this? What's in it for us? And so I talk about the process that not only does it help us to identify the programs, the products, the processes, um, and you know, the, the things that we've already accomplished that we can codify and um, document. But uh, one of Julie's uh, sort of favorite parts of this, because it's happened over and over again, is that it helps us to identify our gaps and without knowing what we need to do or what we haven't done or what we might be able to do, we're never gonna accomplish it. So that's part one. Part two, I don't know how it works in your towns, but here, while a lot of interesting things can get done and do get done, they get done in silos. So nothing ever amplifies the other thing. You know, the, the communications about it isn't as robust as it might be. And what this process does is it gives a, it creates this rallying point from constituency to constituency across the town and say, yeah, I'm a part of this. Um, then point three, everybody loves this. Say, so, yeah, and guess what? We can also get a few bucks out of this. And New Milford, um, because of uh, Julie, has twice been able to get matching grants. Um, one for a barn quilt project and another for a stream, a, a, a stream cleanup project. Um, then the credential itself, yeah, it, it's great. It gives us bragging rights. We can, we can showcase what we've done. Um, it gives us something that we truly can promote civic pride. Last night we did a, a, a round table with educators, artists, um, and uh, town youth about what we might do for an arts and culture project for, for, for kids. And it was extraordinary the amount of energy 
that was coming, you know, from 13 year olds to the superintendent of schools. It's thinking, wow, we can do this? Yeah, we can do this. Um, so that piece really is essential. Uh, and then from, and, and this is um, Karen's wheelhouse uh, as the director of economic development. What the credential ultimately does is it gives us a tool that we can use to attract new business, which in turn attracts um, a, a, a new uh, and, and a different kind of workforce, which in, uh, in turn attracts new families, which ultimately all go to building and keeping, keeping us moving forward. This is very quickly I, on this slide, you know, I, I literally just randomly selected a bunch of actions so that people had a concrete idea of what an action looks like. And I'll, I just jumped through and pick a few to give folks a picture of what it means to accomplish each of these actions that for which we will get some credit. Um, and I will pick those out depending on who the audience is. Um, to, to highlight something uh, on their, on their uh, upcoming list. Um, again, one of my favorite slides, I love these vintage photos um, and thank you Google because I've been using a lot of them throughout these um, uh, presentations. Each of them, and you'll see shortly, gets customized to the audience so that we can say, here's what your particular group can do to help. On this, uh, on this slide um, about the team, who's gonna get it done? So we, we've, at, we've answered the what is it? Why are we doing this now? Who's gonna get this done? And I suspect that this is the same framework for each of you. And uh, as Julie will uh, talk to you more about, um, recognizing and having the town at the top of your list is not only critical, but it's essential. Um, it has been a door opener as we reach out to various groups, commissions, committees, um, to be able to say the mayor sent us or the town council suggested we get in touch. Um, I had one of those calls just yesterday with the folks at the recycling center, who otherwise, you know, who is this guy, right? So we talk about who from the town and Julie will sort of give you insight into how how uh, that can get done. Um, we have countless times reached out to Karen, to the mayor, to the mayor's assistant, Pat, uh, saying we need this signed. Um, we need uh, a meeting, we need a committee, we need access, we need a list, we need uh, a document. And by doing that, it just makes it easier. We now sort of, we have a seat at the table in town. Uh, we are taken seriously because, because because we're doing this lifting and because we are helping all these various groups to get their jobs done and to break down the silos. Um, the residents, Julie and I are sort of the co-captains um, and she will tell you more about how we have as a, well, hopefully effectively have moved a lot of these, uh, a lot of the, uh, the specific project and specific um, action work from our desks onto the desks of various commissions and volunteers, those 30 folks that you heard about. And then um, we always give, it's not just a shout out, it's an acknowledgement that we could not be doing this project without Sustainable Connecticut, without your expertise. Um, and here too, there's the opportunity to reinforce the fact that, you know, it's not like working with the academy where you hold all, all the cards. You want us to win, you want us to get there, and it is very much a team effort. Um, quick slide, so the, the, the who, what, where, uh, now we're on the when part of this conversation. Um, everything, we, we started back in October, um, and those first four bullets are sort of where we are. We put this team together. We, we made this essential connection with, uh, with the town and their various committees. Um, 
And Julie will tell you more about this, but one of the most important things we did, uh, we, we took the 2020 uh, spreadsheet, we cobbled together a uh, stand-in 2021 with all of the updates, and Julie and I spent hours doing an audit. Uh, oh, some, I, I'm admitting somebody now. Huh. Um, we went through action by action with what we knew, most of it with what Julie knew, and said, do we think we can accomplish this? What's real here? Um, we jotted down what points we thought we might be able to uh, achieve. And at the same time, we were writing down who's the best contact, whether that's a town, um, somebody who works in town, or is there um, a town resident uh, who we can reach out to, an expert who might help to um, be a guiding light. And that was an essential piece. Um, then it's very quickly, uh, we, are, we are now in process across those viable um, actions with the goal of uh, turning them into sustainable Connecticut. And here too, I, I, I reinforce the fact that you are there um, to help us figure out whether or not what we're doing is, um, are we doing it in the most effective and efficient way in order to bolster this application, which in turn, is about making sure that we are as well-grounded and well-rooted a sustainable town as possible. Uh, and this, this is the, the, the slide that is customized for every group. I just threw up the zoning and planning one because our experience is so much of what happens um, from a sustainability point of view really does flow through the decisions being made at zoning and planning, how easy it is to uh, get things done from permitting to what's permissible. Um, so in some cases with, with the Arts Commission, for example, this photograph was taken from, uh, the photograph I used was from the Barn Quilt Trail, which was an arts project that Julie led uh, about a year ago. Uh, for town council, there's a fabulous vintage photo, photo of town hall. Um, this slide is fairly consistent on the general asks, the ask for <clears throat> help in communications, um, and then get specific uh, about the kinds of things that we are coming that we will come back to this group to ask for. So, in the in the case of zoning and planning. Um, it's about um, getting access to their rules and regulations, various ordinances, uh, getting their buy-in to participate in workshops. Um, and you know, again, telling them that we need them to ask us questions and we need them to help propel us forward. Um, let's see if there's anything else on this slide. Um, no, that, that's sort of it, the, the ask part, so here too, customizing it as simply as you can, I think is really important because it goes back to what, what's in it for us and what do you need from me? So it's really important. Um, then this is my sort of cheesy slide. Um, I said, we've got one more ask and that ask is for you to imagine where we can go, what this place might be like should we be able to accomplish everything that we're setting out to accomplish? I remind them that sustainability is a future-oriented uh, concept, that what we do today is about tomorrow. So we can all take a deep breath and just imagine where we can go. Um, we then open for questions. Um, this is a, a quote uh, here that's just sort of, that we use as a backdrop for the big idea. Um, and we find that this quote has worked for us, but just for fun, um, I've, uh, I, I've put together a bunch of other possible ones, including my favorite. Uh, they always say time changes things, but you actually, actually have to change them yourself. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to find the quote that fits your culture and your sense of humor and sensibility. 
And that, and with that cheery note, um, that's the end of this presentation. I'm going to stop the share and uh, throw to Julie, unless you folks will, yeah, I'm gonna throw to Julie and then you guys can ask us um, both questions at the end. Let's see. For some reason, oh, I know what I have to do here. Did that do it? I got it. Oh, awesome, thank you. Thanks everybody for indulging me. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. Um, if you have any questions for what Stephen talked about, um, hold them toward the end and I'm going to take about eight minutes right now and talk to you a little bit about the process. And I want you to know that this is not an off the shelf process. This is something that we would do something right, then something wrong, then something right to fix it again. And in the end, we kind of got to where we are. So let me tell you, first of all, a little bit about New Milford. It's located in Northwestern Connecticut. It's the largest town in the state by land. We're known as the gateway to Litchfield County and our town of 26,000 straddles the Housatonic River and is crisscrossed by several tributary streams, one of which we're moving on to clean up thanks to sustainable Connecticut. It's 14 miles from the nearest interstate highway, I-84, has its share of brownfield sites begging for revitalization. And while home to a handful of small and medium sized manufacturers, it's largely a commercial center, a retail commercial center with big box stores, several empty along Route 7. On the plus side, we have a gorgeous 19th and early 20th century village center and Connecticut's largest potential village, largest uh, village green, lots of woods and open spaces with trails and outdoor leisure, Candlewood Lake, and an envisioned 13 mile river trail that's a little over a third complete at this point. Plus, and this is really key to the process that we did, we have an unusually exuberant volunteer cadre. And in partnering with the town's municipal leadership, a growing number of volunteers has embraced the Sustainable Connecticut 2021 certification process as much more than just a way to amass points. They see it as really, as Stephen mentioned and repeated, a unique opportunity to embed long-term sustainability and inclusivity into our town and thereby, and this is a key part for us, reshaping our town's identity as we go forward. Our, volunteer, our mayor actually volunteered as the chair of the 2021 recertification team that principally stands at about 30 municipal staff and resident volunteers, as Stephen mentioned. And Karen Pollard, who's here today with us, our economic development director was the first advocate in our town of recertification because as she's often said, a sustainable town is the way we're gonna attract new business, young workers, professionals, and new families that we really bring the skills that we need to grow our town in the 21st century. And she's opened all kinds of doors for us. That was really key to getting going. So here's how we've organized ourselves to stretch for, hold your breath, Stephen, silver certification. There have been four stages really in this process. And the first, which I call admittedly floundering around and freaking out started late last spring when we realized we had to recertify ourselves after earning bronze with just two folks working for two months in 2018. And the town planner who led it had left town. And I got to thank, I think it was the town of Greenwich, the town planner said to me, Julie, don't even think you can do this with two people as you did in 2017. And that kind of burned into my mind. And when I would wake up at four in the morning, I would say, volunteers, volunteers, pick up the pad on the side of my bed and say, who can I get today to work on this basically? Um, so I had absolutely no idea where to start. The website looked utterly daunting to me. I'm not a digital and I'm not a numbers person. And I would ask Sustainable Connecticut, I would call Jess again and again with the wildest questions. And there would be a slight hesitation in which she would say something like, let me help you find where that is on the website. And I would breathe an enormous sigh of relief, not just that she was showing me, but she didn't say, Julie, everybody else seems to be able to figure this out but you. Anyway, um, so what I did is I fell back on my reporter background and I emailed 10 Connecticut towns that had earned silver, some of which were smaller than we were, and asked them what lessons they would share with us. And eight responded or were incredibly generous with their advice. So 
Stephen and I are delighted to be able to return a little bit of that to all of the towns who really helped us out on that. The second stage I'd call, I think, we can do this. Yeah, I think we can do it. If they could do it, we can do it. So the first thing I did was meet with Karen, again, the economic development director, and the town planner and zoning enforcement officer, who was way overworked. Um, and I showed them both the proof that other towns of our size had done superb jobs going for silver. They got interested, at least they didn't say no at that first stage. And then the mayor happened to walk in and say, when I was saying to Karen, I don't wanna be the chair of this thing. This looks absolutely like one giant amoeba and I'm not sure I had the bandwidth to really do that with everything else going on in my life. The mayor walked in and said, oh, I'll be the uh, chair of this thing, no problem. And I thought, yeah, it's gonna be an honorary chair but he has turned out to be a superb link in our ability to get things done. Um, then Karen signed up to volunteer. Oh, and then the, um, the public works guy who's phenomenal signed up to volunteer as well. And this was key, as Stephen said, to be able to go out and recruit volunteers, telling them about the support that the town leadership was giving us. Because if you live in a small New England town like we do, you know that the common complaint from everybody in town, no matter what their advocacy or what their position is, the town just doesn't get on board with this. So we took care of that criticism that was going to emerge early on. The third of the fourth stages is what I call, so let's get going, where do we start? And that's when Stephen joined as co-coordinator. He's my neighbor and we were sitting there at a cocktail, distanced, semi-masked, although he had a great plate of hors d'oeuvres out there. And I said, he said, so what, have you, what are you doing, Julie? I haven't seen you in a while. I said, I'm doing the coolest thing, putting on my marketing hat. And before I knew it, Stephen was on board, and he is probably the third secret to why this is going well. Anyway, it took us, Stephen and me, about three months to recruit first 10, then 15, then 25 volunteers from the municipal staff and town residents with proven track records at getting stuff done or with special expertise, because we sure didn't want any seat warmers on this. Everyone who signed on became responsible for an action, and this was another key. We didn't just say, come and let's talk about this and you know, see how we're gonna get it together. We structured the whole thing so that when people came on board, they knew exactly what they were responsible for. And in fact, they have mirrored our model of going out and getting volunteers by going out and getting their sub volunteers to work on their individual projects. So that's why I think we have 30, but it could be 35 at this point. I'm not really sure because we haven't had a meeting in the last 24 hours with folks. Um, <clears throat> After attending an October Sustainable Connecticut meeting to learn about the 2021 actions changes, Stephen put together, as he mentioned, a huge spreadsheet with 2020 actions and possible 2021 changes for everyone to use. And that was our breakthrough because that meant we were all able to speak the same language and we were looking forward to what we were going to be asked to do in 2021. He and I spent several Zooms together going over and over and over and over and over the spreadsheets. And that was an idea that one of the Connecticut towns pointed out that make sure you have a master spreadsheet where you have absolutely everything on it. And as long as Stephen's laptop was able to accommodate the growing number of columns toward the right on the spreadsheet, we knew we would be okay. He then created the presentation and Karen got us invited to Zoom with five or six key commissions and civic groups. Word started getting around and more people were curious and more people volunteered. And by October, we had our first team Zoom and we invited Jess from Sustainable Connecticut to be the featured speaker so that volunteers would see this is the real deal. It's not like a POCD that sometimes gets stuck on the shelf, but this is actual implementation action. And that was a contrast that we were able to tell people to get them excited about doing that. That in your lifetime, you will see the changes that you're working on in Sustainable Connecticut get done. By December 31st, we had point persons for almost all the yes and some of the maybe and none of the no actions, although we were still short some and still working on getting volunteers. And the fourth and final stage is where our team is right now. I call it the coaching and supporting team. And it's no different from what you do if you're managing a small business, basically. This stage is enormously time consuming and enormously important. And what keeps our phones ringing from literally eight in the morning until last night, it was 10 at night. Um, in addition to Stevens and my own actions and several of which are from start projects and the three equity toolkits for which we're responsible, 
His and my job is to encourage our team members to find expertise they need to access. And I'll give you a great example of that. I had an excited call from the woman doing the, um, I think it's the um, natural resource and wildlife inventory. And she said, guess what? We have a professional entomologist living in New Milford and she can do the insects. And that literally made her day. Anyway, beyond encouraging and finding the expertise, we help them identify and recruit volunteers of their own and to help them continually surmount obstacles of our own. And we don't do that ourselves, but we're in a sense almost like information brokers and we know who to call in town and now who to call in the municipality. Oh, and there's one last part of this stage, which I call barrier busting. And that's really, as both of us alluded to, that's the role of our mayor. And let me give you some examples of what he's done. He's given us the service of this really neat new guy called a community resource specialist who did the video for us for both of our community match campaigns online. Um, he had his assistant who's incredibly organized become in charge of uploading all of our submissions as we're going along. And we're beginning now to try to make sure that she has all of the submissions that we have now early on. So that as we go down the road, we don't have a traffic jam in August and she quits. Um, the mayor got us permission, is getting us permission to see and use the POCD draft content, which is about to come out, but our, the team working on the inventory wanted to see that early on. Finding the funds, and this is incredibly exciting, um, for a Spanish Portuguese town emergency communication system that the point person on the team for communications has been working on for five months with the mayor to get the town to allocate money and work with Everbridge, the company that does that for Connecticut towns, to get that going because that is what we regard is a population we want to be most inclusive with at this point. Um, linking us up with energy consultants to do a budget neutral energy upgrade on our municipal buildings and the consultants who are scheduled to do our affordable housing assessment, making sure this stuff gets done before August 1st. And this is the random stuff that you can't control but you cross your fingers that the town is able to get done before we're ready to go. Finally, in closing, we got a long way to go and a lot of work ahead of us and we're gonna make mistakes and some things are not gonna work out. But I wanna yield the floor now um, to Lynn to open to questions. Finishing by saying that Karen, Stephen and I are motivated by the way this thing is going viral around the town and how often we're stopped in supermarkets or at the gas station and say, tell me about this sustainable thing. What's in it for our town? Or I have somebody on my street who might be able to help you or I'm interested myself. Um, folks are taking sustainability volunteering um, seriously, volunteering before we ask them, taking on challenging projects and feeling proud of what they're doing. And in short, and it was Jess who pointed this out is what we're doing is creating a real sense of community around this. And for that, we are deeply grateful to Sustainable Connecticut. So Lynn, take it away for questions and answers. Thank you both so much. What I love, I love everything about how you message and communicate and your positivity. I really love um, the focus on the process and it's about healthy communities because sometimes we really kick ourselves. We've created this monster of people like, wait, we want the points. Is this good? You feel like you're a teacher. Like, does this count? Can we get an extension? And we just have to say, this is about connecting with people in your community and making it a better place for everyone. Don't worry about the points, which, you know, yeah, we're a certification program, but um, that really is the bottom line. So it's great. So this is uh, time for interaction here. Um, if people, yeah, there's some questions in the chat. I'd love to just have people turn on their mics and um, their cameras, if you've, you've got one. And uh, when you introduce your name and your question, please tell us what town you're from and share what you'd like to share. So maybe what I'll do is, um, yeah, why don't we just go randomly and we'll make sure, yeah, look at the, if you put something in the chat, feel free to um, voice it now. Okay, um, I put three questions in the chat. I'm Margaret Hunt. I raised my hand on the Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the Sustainable Litchfield Committee. Um, we're pretty new as of last year. And I had three questions. One of them has already been answered, which is great. The first question I had was, um, Stephen, I'm looking yep. at your slide presentation yep. and yep. I see a logo. 
on the front page there, the um, geometric shapes with the grandstand, um, the bandstand in the middle of it. Is that something that is pre-existed or did your committee create that? Where did that logo come from? Uh, that, that is, and I say this with, uh, you know, with love, that is one of New Milford's many logos. Uh, and it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to Julie's point about certain, you know, part of this is about our achieving, you know, a, a more holistic integrated identity. Uh, that bandstand has been on the green for, you know, well over a hundred years mm -hmm. and various forms of it are used uh, in the town logo. So I picked it up. I, I've done a whole lot of illegal cutting and pasting from things uh, mm -hmm. in order to get here. Um, but that that comes from, that. that's a, a new Milford logo. And what I recommend, and, and part of that was important to me to bring it back to town so that the folks in town were reminded on every page, this is about us yep. and we're participating in this larger project, but this is about us. So I, I'm sure Litchfield has something. Yeah, well, one of the reasons I asked is because what our committee is currently trying to do uh, is have a logo contest for sustainable Litchfield. We're trying to think of oh, a cool. way to make us visible in the community and we thought we would put out a, a logo contest. Um, when, so we've been putting together criteria and how we're gonna publicize it. And we're choosing a selection committee from the town and mm -hmm. trying to have a variety of age groups. And Litchfield has a couple of, they're not boroughs, that's, that's the little historic borough, but we have Milton, Bantam, East Litchfield, Northfield and Litchfield proper all make up Litchfield. And each of them has its own little sense of self. So we're trying to have people from each part cool on the committee. But anyway, so you, you brought something to my mind which says, hey, we, we haven't looked at all the possible logos that are already out there. So we need to do that. So that was my first question. Thank you. Second you question said, oh, I didn't realize you already had bronze. So I had put in the chat box, OMG, are you guys jumping to silver without doing bronze? But now I no. heard Julie say <laughs> that in you already had bronze. So we have nothing yet. So we're excited. Um, and my last question was, do you have other partners besides municipal like commission partners? Talk to me, can you talk to me a little bit about that and how you get them? Stephen, should oh, I yeah. pick up on that one? Sure, and I'll um, fill in yeah, what, what you forget. <laughs> I think our, our, our most exciting partner is HVA, which is the Housatonic Valley okay. Association, the advocate for watersheds, et cetera. Yeah. And the whole reason we went to that second community match in December, I don't know what we were thinking, but the reason that we did that is that we really wanted to be able to hire HBA to work with the community and help them and do watershed education and to help them technically to work on several spots along Great Brook, which is a stream that we're working on. And they have proven to be outstanding. I mean, they have such expertise mm. in this area, both at, at, at rallying the community, getting it going, helping us figure out how to do that. And then to providing not only the trees that we're going to be planting, but also to really, um, to, to, to really do this watershed education the way it really should be done with the folks in town who volunteer on these projects. So I'd say thus far, they're our biggest. Stephen, can you think of any yes. others? Yeah, okay. there are a couple of others. Um, the, the arts and culture project really does touch um, Perfect. It touches a number of, well, there are folks with arts oriented businesses who are on board with that. We've got the schools on board with that. Um, we have got um, local uh, artists, uh, the Palabalas Dance Group uh, that's housed in Washington. Their artistic and education director actually are New Milford residents. They are on board. So we've got a connection to um, Palabalas, uh, we're working with ASAP, the after school arts uh, project um, that happens to be, again, housed in Washington, but with a number of New Milford residents who are part of it. Um, and we are working with the local recycling center, which is the first of its kind public private enterprise uh, in New Milford um, that's really driven from the private side. Um, so, 
as each of these projects gets slightly bigger, we're finding that it's also easier to knock on the doors of businesses who are critical partners. And one thing that I would throw out to the question about uh, logos, I would encourage Sustainable Connecticut to, I, I know, don't take this the wrong way, to think from a marketing perspective, what you might be able to provide us that we then can use, uh, you know, like I support some sort of, I support Sustainable Connecticut or uh, Sustainable Connecticut and put your logo here or your town, town here. So as people are driving from town to town, they start to see this logo with, with Litchfield, New Milford, uh, various towns, you know, and it just starts to amplify. So our work is amplified from town to town to town, which ultimately amplifies your work and the consistency in the way in which we do that um, can help us all. That's, that's, a great idea. that's another conversation. And Lynn, I'm happy to have that with you uh, off, uh, offline. Stephen, maybe we should make sure people have our emails through Sustainable Connecticut so that yeah, if that's fine. you can ask us. That, yeah. would be Lynn. that would be great if you guys want to pop them in the chat. Um, yeah, let's move to John. He had a question. Hey there, uh, John Cracker from Lyme, Connecticut. And yeah. we um, are a town of 2,500, so uh, much smaller than New Milford, but I'm familiar with New Milford. What was uh, sort of, we had our first committee meeting last week, so we are brand new into this process. And what I Welcome. got- Welcome. I'm sorry? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, what I got from your presentations, and thank you, those were great presentations. It sheds light on the fact that we probably, need to get the right people on our committee in the first place. Uh, people from arts, people from the farming community, affordable housing, et cetera. Um, but and I also something we had not talked about is, is probably making presentations to our key commissions. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wanted to see, is it possible to take your deck and make it our own? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you, that Sustainable Connecticut has a copy and okay. um, the format, it, a lot of it was my sort of uh, customizing the format. So it may be a, a little wobbly, but feel free to just cut and paste your, your, own, um, okay. your own text. Um, yeah. And if nobody's looking, you can use New Milford's pictures too. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the spreadsheet also sounded like a great idea too. Well, well I mean, the, sp the spreadsheet that we used um, because we knew 2021 was going to be, was going to have updates from 2020 and we were starting several months ago and we didn't, we needed to get out of the gate. We cobbled together a, a sort of a hybrid of, you know, a list of actions from 2021 that were anticipated and number changes so that we were all talking up the same thing, but the current, um, spreadsheet that, Sustainable Connecticut um, put out a few weeks ago is the one that I would suggest you work with. The Great. columns that we added were, and I think Julie spoke to this, was a yes, no, maybe. We went through every one of them, every one of these actions. Yes, we can do this. No, forget about this. Maybe. And that then, that process helped us to then determine who are we calling on the yeses so that we can push them out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Who are we going to cajole on the maybes? And let's not waste any of the time on the no's. The other thing that Ju Julie spoke to that was essential for us as we brought people on, because the master spreadsheet is daunting. I love you all, but it's daunting. Um, as, as we brought on people, we kept them focused on their little bucket. So we want to talk to you about the arts. Here are the four things in arts that, you, that we could use your help because when people start with the little one, it's much easier to slowly pull the camera back to help them to see how their piece fits into the puzzle. But if, if you start with, um, you know, the, the whole, you know, the, the, the image is, you know, we want you to help build these walls before we bring the, you know, before we bring them into decorating the rest of the room. Right. And it, it really has been useful. So people can, as they get deeper into their, action, they see how that works and it's easier for them to understand somebody else's. So see that, that, yeah. Hey, the question, yeah, 
go ahead. Maybe Sorry. you could put in the um, spreadsheet and just remove the New Milford information, but just with the columns and the headings that we developed, that might be very useful for folks. It's, it is, I, I will tell you because I am not the, the best um, uh, Excel jockey. It's, it's a little wobbly and there are notes and funny columns and some things that don't match up. I mean, it is a, very, it is a personal piece of work. <laughs> Uh, I'm happy to share it, um, but you know, it, we use the base spreadsheet and we dropped in people's names, we dropped in our follow-ups, we dropped in which points we thought we could get so that we, we had a running tally. Um, I'm happy to share it, but know that it may break if you try to add things or move things. Okay. I mean, yeah, last, there's nothing proprietary in it. It is Let me just, just jump in. I'm going to share this screen quickly. And John, if you have further questions, because we've acknowledged that the website can be overwhelming, this is the landing page. You're going to want to use this button, support for okay. your town. And then you're going to see all these things. Sustainability team guidance, the fellowship program, how to connect with the students in the summer, equity support, no cost assistance, which is kind of no cost consulting the match fund, which is how you get money, external grants, actions, trainings, events, and so on. So when you get to this, if you go to sustainability team guidance and resources for your team, we have here what we call our action overview worksheet. That's an Excel document. That's kind of what Stephen would have adapted um, for his town. So take a look at that. Let us know if there are things we can do to fine tune it, make it more useful for you, but um, download it and make it your own. We will also in this spot put um, Stephen's PowerPoint so you can find it and uh, other resources that are useful to you. Um, let us know so they're easy to find. Sorry, John, do you have a, a further no, question? I, just, I have one last question, which is probably a, um, complicated, but I'm not sure what it is. I mean, I'm used to live in Warren, so I know New Milford and much larger commercial. We don't have, we don't have any commercials, but we have a lot of farms um, and a couple of stores. But I think the first thing we need to do is get in front of the Planning and Zoning Com Commission and the Inland Wetlands Commission, and particularly the, and, and maybe the Land Trust. Um, but I guess I wanted to know what kind of, did you get pushback from those organizations and what kind of pushback? You know, I, I don't I don't remember any of that because I think because the goals of this project are so aligned with their individual goals, mm -hmm. you know, they sort of looked at us as free labor to help help to wave their flag and help to make their causes that much more that that better heard and that much more essential to the town. Um, there's not, I mean, the interesting thing about this project, there's nothing controversial, unless of course you wanna foul the waters. I mean, there's right. absolutely <laughs> nothing controversial here. Um, you know, and, and we haven't, I mean, because we haven't asked for buckets of money, uh, we, I, I suspect that when you ask for money, uh, that's gonna be where you might find pushback. But, you know, conceptually, there's been nothing but support um, you know, that's an important point that you're making because we haven't asked the town for any money. In fact, we brought in money through the community match fund and our town is not that, that resource rich in terms of financial money to help do this. And so we've done this solely on volunteer labor and people helping and really haven't asked for anything. And I, let me just add one piece. I thought that was a great question about, you know, should we get in touch with the land trust, et cetera, and the, and the Inland Wetlands Commission. You probably, because you have the advantage of being in a small town, have really good relations with individuals on all of these. Mm -hmm. I would make it a personal phone call to the person that you think is the most can do on the committee or the chair in that case, because living in a town like that, the relationships are close and you probably know those folks rather than a formal presentation. Because initially when we did our formal presentations, people were like, we like didn't get any Q and A and people were like, okay. And it was only much later that we got results, but you want to get results soon. So I would call in. Okay. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, you'll... I, I think that too, I mean, where we've been successful is we start with that key person 
and we mm -hmm. use that key person to leverage the introduction so that they can then ask. We do, we help them to tell the story. Um, and that, that was really useful in getting more volunteers as well. Great, thanks very much. Um, thanks lot for of questions and discussion. You. Who else has a question? We're nearing um, 11, but uh, Torin and I are happy to stay on as long as there's uh, questions. Let's see, do I see a hand up? I'm, I'm, while you're looking for a hand, this is Margaret in Litchfield yeah. uh, with a comment for John, and I'm going to put it in the chat, John Kicker, but I don't want you to miss it. You're in Warren, you said, correct? I used to live in Warren, but uh -oh. uh, I'm in line. I'm a selectman in line oh, now. Line. Okay, yeah. okay. I, I was going to say, I know somebody who just retired in Warren who might be super, but <laughs> wrong town. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is Harvey Pesson. I'm with uh, the Newtown Forest Association. And as far as I know, my town does not have any such committee uh, to support sustainable CT. Uh, I have a more limited scope. Uh, I'm on several conservation committees and associations. And last year, I did get a community match grant for my land trust. But two other applications I put in were denied. And, and that's fair enough. So my question is, is there someone from Sustainable CT that I could work with and plan my requests for matching funds instead of just writing one and handing it in, someone I can work with to develop it along the guidelines that your organization is looking for so that it can be shaped ahead of time to be successful. And I suspect if I get more grants from different organizations, I may get more community organizations to also do the same thing and then form a nucleus for a sustainable CT committee on my town side. Right, great question, Harvey. Yes, absolutely. Abe Hilding Solario is our contact person for the Community Match Fund, which if people don't know about that program, we provide matching dollars for um, sustainability projects in your community, matching dollars that are coming from your residents, small businesses and others um, through our crowd crowdfunding uh, match campaign. So um, Abe is the person, and actually Harvey, we've designed it so that we don't want people writing an application and submitting it. The first thing you're supposed to do is call Abe. And right. um, it's often kind of an iterative, you know, discussion conversation of, um, you know, massaging the project so that we're sure it meets you know, some of our criteria, which are alignment with the actions and, um, you know, a very strong public benefit and public accessibility for all. So um, we could actually, Abe's got a long name. Uh, I, I know Abe, Abe. we have you know, spoken, so. Yeah. Give Abe a call that is good. for others, just anytime you need any of us, the easiest thing is info at sustainablect.org and we'll just put that email in the chat. And that comes to a bunch of us and we funnel it to the right person and usually answer it easily within so, 24 hours. By the same line of thinking, um, we do have one person in Newtown who actually registered the town with your organization. And I did call her, we spoke, and she really had no interest in going any further. And I'm sort of jealous of New Milford that it has a core group of people who are doing this. So from a sales and marketing perspective, is there anybody from Sustainable CT that would approach the town and actually try and gen up a volunteer group like New Milford has and other towns have? Because the woman that I spoke to sort of, you know, she did, she registered it and that was it. She's not getting involved. And I don't know anybody else who was involved. So do you have marketing people on your side who could present to the town? Yeah, well, Justin, yeah. Mayer, um, who uh, Julie and Stephen mentioned, is and and all of us are available to 
come out to the Zoom screen these days <laughs> okay. and um, present. Um, yeah, we, we love to have a conversation with you about what um, what you think is effective. Obviously, we can come make presentation presentations. Sometimes we reach out to um, mayors, elected officials in uh, neighboring towns that you might have a relationship with who are active in the program so they can kind of talk peer to peer and learn um, about the program that way in addition to, you know, from our team. So happy to, um, you know, assist with connections and our team coming out in any way that's useful. So we do have an economic development team and I suspect that would be the best way for you to gain entry into our town. Would that be appropriate? Sure, yeah. And I mean, let me just add to Harvey that, you know, Harvey, we are so grateful to Brookfield because it was your former head of parks and recreation who got your trail done over 16 years and really inspired all of us on the New Milford River Trail here before he went on, I think, to another town. And we understand that 25% of the people using that trail in Brookfield are from New Milford by actual click cloud. So we are deeply grateful for you. And I would think that if you wanted our economic development director, I'm sure they know each other, to talk to yours and say how cool this project was, you know, the usual wonderful sort of marketing things that they can do. I'm sure she'd be delighted to do that or our mayor. And maybe that's the way to get it going. And we would be very helpful, very, very happy to help facilitate that at any time because we're grateful to Brookfield. Okay. Well, maybe you could open up the Borden Trail to non-residents of your town. That would be great too. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> I don't know if we have to with the mayor, but we can try. <laughs> it's been closed since the beginning of COVID. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I understand. I'm just trying to rib you a little. But we'd be happy to okay. do it. Okay. Other questions or uh, requests for assistance or topics that might be useful in following months or general training sessions or whatever. Um, yeah, Margaret, for the future, um, equities become the big word for 2021. So a coffee hour on equity and, and applying the equity lens and the equity toolkit, maybe you've already done it, um, but that would be a request for the future. Thanks. Yeah, I would echo that as well as we're gonna to try to tackle that. And also to Harvey's question, we, we did, when we were with we a small group of about five volunteers, um, got a presentation from Jess and Old Lyme who just got their bronze certificate certification. That was very helpful and that helped expand our group to, to a larger and larger uh, numbers. So that's, it's, it's very useful to have that presentation. Excellent. Yeah, we'll absolutely do uh, a copy on equity. We have a lot of support tools, as you probably know, coaches. Um, we're about to post our um, intensive equity training sessions for 2021, which will happen each quarter. Um, and yeah, but it's also nice to have kind of a more informal discussion on equity so we could bring some coaches on and um, uh, our team as well to talk about that. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, New Milford, for sharing. So inspiring. Yeah, thanks, um, and for everyone for uh, your questions and your, uh, your work and your dedication to this. Um, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Here. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. Where, where, can, where can we go to find the recordings of this session? Torin, you want to uh, say where they're going to be posted? I think they're going to be posted in our webinars page, and I'll pop the link in right now. Just give me a okay, little bit of time. No problem. Yeah, we'll also, Harvey, I assume you're on our e-newsletter that goes out roughly every yes. couple of weeks. So we'll make sure we um, mention where things are posted there too. And that okay. should be linked to our webinars page right there. And feel free yeah. to reach out to, to Julie or, or to me with questions. Uh, we're happy to, to share our uh, battle scars. <laughs> okay, that's great. Right. Good? Yeah.
Thanks so much. Thank you all. Uh, See you later. Good luck. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Bye.